Hi, it's Rob Moore here, and as you can see, I'm in the new podcast studio again. This is part two of how to get organic followers, fans, reach, customers uh, for your business, mostly on social media. Um, bear with me while I actually officially go live onto the podcast, uh, and then we'll crack on. So if you've got any questions in the live, please do post it below. How can I help you get more organic followers, fans, reach, exposure and customers on social media? Hi, it's Rob Moore here and welcome to the Disruptive Entrepreneur Podcast. Now, quite recently I launched an episode about getting organic fans, followers, reach and customers. And in usual Rob style, I thought oh, I could get 10 tips done in 30 minutes or so and we've got five done because I want to try and do a bit of a deep dive for you. So this is part two of getting more organic followers, fans and reach customers, exposure, your brand awareness, your global audience if you like to sell more stuff or just to just to build more of a community. So the first five we covered on part one. Step zero was make sure, making sure that you populate all your profiles. So you've got to be seen on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Medium, all of these different profiles. And I used to think, well, oh, it's, too, it's too overwhelming to set them all up. But ultimately, you get different followers and fans and um, demographics of people who will um, you know, follow your work and share your stuff on the different platforms. So you want them all set up. We covered that in detail. Then we talked about posting consistently between one and nine times a day, depending on who you are and the platform. Don't get overwhelmed by that, but go back and listen to episode uh, one on that. Then the second piece of content, which I'm currently doing now because I'm doing a live as well, is repurposing across different media. So I like to see every piece of content I put out there as an asset. Being a property guy, I like assets. So if I'm doing this podcast, I might as well do a live feed. And then the live feed can go in various online communities and on YouTube. Uh, this audio that you're listening to, obviously, you're listening to it on the podcast, but it can go on SoundCloud and all the other different podcast platforms. Our virtual assistant could then transcribe it and create a blog from it. So that was point two, repurposing across multimedia. Step three was asking for likes and shares, but not too frequently such that it just seems desperate and it just becomes normal and boring. Step four was posting good content that people like and want to share, covered. Step five was gearing your content to the platform, so the one minute video format on Instagram, the long format of rant like I do on the Facebook Lives, or the 30 minutes to two hours like I do on the podcast episodes. Okay, so that takes us up to now. So point six of how to get more organic reach followers, fans, customers, is to do the odd rant. Now I'm quite well known, no, quite quite well known, quite well known for doing rants. So much so that we have an episode that comes out every two weeks on my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur, called Rob's Rants. Now I kind of like to get on a bit of a soapbox and have a little bit of a rant about something I passionately believe in, but I never really used to put that out there on video or audio or to the world because I'd be worried about how the world might judge me or maybe I don't want to be so opinionated. And about six months ago, um, I parked up my Ferrari at a petrol station to fill it up with petrol, as you do. And someone said, oh, nice car, mate. Can I take a photo and blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to be nice, of course, and said, yeah, I didn't want to say, fuck oh, off. So I said, yes. Uh, and then he put me in a Facebook group called Parking Like a Twat in Peterborough. There's 10,000 people in this group. And my post went wildfire. Oh, look at this guy. What an idiot. You know, filling it up with the wrong kind of petrol. You know, and they all went off on me. There were like 80 or 90 comments. And some of them were like, look, he's just filling up his car with petrol. Leave him alone. And it created quite a little bit of a buzz. I didn't know there were 10,000 people in the, in the world that would join a group called Parking Like a Twat in Peterborough. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun. I got in my Ferrari and I just did a little post about, couldn't believe how I'd been in, um, outed in this group and I'm only trying to fill it up with petrol. How else do you park a car when you fill it up with petrol? And this video was one of my most virally shared videos out of, out of all I've done. And it's one that a lot of people remember me for and they think it's really funny. And it got tens of thousands of views completely organically. And so I realised then, you know what, if there's something I really passionately believe in, I should get it out there and have a bit of a rant. And it doesn't just have to be purely professional or businessy focused. If you rant about something that, you know, other people can relate to or you make it OK for them 
uh, to sort of to you know to talk about it too so i've often um ranted for example about people who post about getting up at 5 a.m and in the 5 a.m club or people that take photos about of their food and saying that maybe that's not what a lot of us want to see on social media and hey look those, those rants usually get more likes and shares now what you don't want to do is rant about everything because if you rant about everything you just become a ranter and people just they just tune out to it all but if there's things you believe in or there's things that you think that other people also feel the same way as you and you feel like the truth needs to be outed or you've got an extreme opinion, a polarizing opinion, a new opinion and a unique opinion. Or if there's something that just, you know, you're just like, oh, man, I've had enough of this in the world. I need to I need to put a broadcast out about this. It will probably get more likes and shares than many of your other videos. In LinkedIn, I've had over a quarter of a million views. Um, about 1,300 likes on my all this 5 a.m. club bollocks post. Um, Gordon said I'm looking younger. That's because I'm in a white shirt and I look like I should be at school and I shaved my beard and I look 15. So thank you, Gordon. All right, then. So that's rants. Uh, number seven, then, is newsjacking and trending. So what's trending at the moment on Twitter, on Google, on Facebook? You can actually search for Google Trends, Twitter Trends. Instagram, I think, now has Trends. On the right hand side at the top on your home page on Facebook, it says trending. So you could think, for example, uh, one of my posts that got the most shares on Twitter was when Conor McGregor fought Nate Diaz in, in, um, when he went up a weight category, which is quite a big thing um, in mixed martial arts. And hey, you know, I'm kind of interested in mixed martial arts, not majorly, and I never comment about it. But I just thought it was a brave thing that he did stepping up. I thought he got himself out of his comfort zone. I thought there were a lot of business and life lessons in there. I just made a post about that the day after he lost. Uh, I thought I said I admired him and he stepped up. And yeah, he lost, but he didn't lose because he couldn't lose. Because if he won, he won. And if he lost, he won, just like he did with the Floyd Mayweather fight, because it was a brave thing to do. And that got the most comments, likes and shares out of any one of my posts on Twitter because it was trending. Everyone at that time in the world was talking about Conor McGregor, who's a worldwide phenomenon. So is there anything that's going on? I don't know, in the political world, in the business space, in, you know, that you can talk about. Now, it will get more likes and shares and comments and debates if it's what's in everyone's mind. And if it's making people emotional, if it's an emotive subject it will get even more debated. So at the moment, Bitcoin is a huge thing. And um, I went in Bitcoin relatively recently. We're going to launch a Bitcoin course very, very soon. And it's not one of these, hey, make 1% a day on Bitcoin kind of courses. It's a proper granular course on how to research it, analyze it, how to you know, make sure you don't make mistakes, don't get scammed, what platforms to use, how to drip feed your money in, you know, if, proper evaluation of the platforms and the, in the media. Um, and the, the fact that I think it's a, an asset more than it is a currency at the moment, even, the, even though it's a currency, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, everyone's talking about Bitcoin. And, um, you know, one of my um, posts recently has had uh, 13,000 views in, you know, days, maybe even hours, which for me is quite a lot of views. All organic, no um, pay-per-click or spend on the marketing, just because it's a highly topical, debated subject. Now, when people go in and say, oh, Bitcoin's amazing, and then other people go, oh, Bitcoin's a scam, this is good. You want people to debate either side. You want it to be highly controversial and polarised, not, not gimmick and not for the sake of it. Don't be controversial for the sake of being controversial. Um, but if it is a controversial subject and people go and debate it, that's good for the reach, the exposure of it. So don't be scared to let people debate. Don't be scared if people have an opposing opinion to you and they argue with you a bit. If they argue with you a bit, then they're going to keep your posts boosted. They're going to get other people involved. So I like to keep those debates going. Some people, you know, they want to use news jacking and trending and controversy. But then when someone disagrees with them, they either delete the post or they delete the person who posted. And I just think, no, this is what you want. Often the people who have an opposing opinion to you, a strong one, they're the people that are going to get your work shared the most. They're your best marketers. So you want to encourage that. But important about rants and news jacking and trending is no gimmicks. Don't just do it for the sake of it. You know, don't do anything about transgender or race or anything just to try and because you know it's controversial, but there's no good content behind it or it's it, it doesn't seem like there's a good reason for it. And also with rants and news jacking and trending, you can't do this every single post. You know, you need variety. That's why I've given you 10 things. 
So one is consistency of posting, repurposing your media, sharing your old stuff, your new stuff, someone else's old stuff and new stuff. Like I shared John Paul Getty's Six Laws of Success. J. Paul Getty, sorry. Um, I, you know, you could share Robert Cialdini's Six Laws of Influence, for example, and then, you know, credit them. So you want the variety of the content. That's why you ask for likes and shares, but not too much. Otherwise, people are like, oh, he's always asking for likes and shares. So varying your delivery of all of these. Um, consistency is important of your live feeds and your podcasts, but also surprises as well. So I know because I'm looking at my um, a analytics at the moment, the people were relatively surprised when I came out and made some statements and comments about Bitcoin. And I only waited because I wanted to wait until I was in Bitcoin. Because, you know, some of my um, haters and critics are going to be like, oh, Robin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin's a scam. Well, I'm in with my own money. Uh, and I only comment on things I do myself. And I feel like I'm, you know, relatively credible or experienced to talk about. Uh, and where I feel I'm not, I make that disclaimer, if you like. OK, so number eight, then, is anti-popular. So if something is popular and everyone's going on about it, like the 4am club, the 5am club, or they're all taking pouty uh, selfies, or they're all um, taking photos of their food, or you think uh, everyone's got Botox or whatever, um, and, you know, you make a post um, which is kind of, you know, you're, you're showing a, a, an opposing view, or... Um, you know, so, for example, your opposing view on Bitcoin might be that actually you should wait or maybe you should short Bitcoin. Or, um, you know, if a lot of people are concerned about how they look and all these filters and all this Botox, you know, I know people who are 21 and 23 and are perfectly, I was going to say perfectly nice looking, very beautiful, in fact. And they're getting Botox at that age. Felicity, don't do it oh. ever. <laughs> no, let's put it on. Let's put it on record. You're never going to get Botox, right? No, never. Well, maybe when you've got as many wrinkles as me, you, can, you should have Botox. But it's like, no, you're young, you're beautiful, you don't need Botox. Because, you know, this it's, is like a big thing at the moment. Everyone's getting Botox when they don't need it. Um, recently, there was a woman who's had um, something like 50 surgical procedures on her face, literally bone reconstruction, to, to, to try and look like Angelina Jolie. And she hasn't done a good job, I'm afraid. And she doesn't look like Angelina Jolie. She looks... Oh, you just have to research. I don't want to criticise this person because this person, you know, obviously is doing something that's right for them. So I'm not going to judge. But, you know, so I want to grab her and I want to hug her and say, you're perfectly beautiful as you are. I saw the photo of her before, before she'd had all of this major reconstructive surgery. She's a beautiful girl and she doesn't look any better. And men probably don't think she looks anyway. So anyway, this post about me saying, you know, I actually said the title was it was don't fuck with your face. And again, that got a load of people going, oh, Rob, yeah, you're right. You know, let's save people from ruining their face and, you know, and everything else. And then there's other girls going, oh, I, can, I can look what I, like, what I want to look like. It's my business. Um, so, yeah, I'm ranting a bit here now. So what's anti-popular? What's, um, you know, what the masses are talking about this. You can talk about something, you know, completely different for example, or a new way of the same thing. You know, I've done a few posts about sort of spirituality and meditation and, you know, maybe that mindfulness isn't just about trying to meditate for half an hour and, you know, the law of attraction without action is merely a distraction. Anyway, some ideas for you. Um, again, don't use gimmicks on these. You just want to think about, okay, how can I be unique? How can I surprise my audience? How can I, I put a new take, a, a new spin on what people are talking about, what, what is on everyone's lips? OK, number nine, then, is to run competitions and do giveaways. So um, we're going to start running some competitions and giveaways to get more followers on my Facebook page and to get more people subscribed to The Destructive Entrepreneur. I guarantee you this. If you offer to give away Apple products, you will get loads of likes and shares. Um, if you give away cash, you'll get loads of likes and shares. I have in the past asked people to do things, you know, please help me. I help you. I put hundreds of hours of content out there for you on the podcast and in my Facebook communities. Please, could you help me and review my book or do this? And a few people do it. Not many. But if I say, hey, you know, I'll give you a free one to one call or I'll give you an iPad or I'll pay you 50 quid. Boom. Everyone goes to do it. So could you give giveaways, competitions, something that's exciting as well, not just like an ebook or something that doesn't have a lot of value, something valuable. Um, and hey, you know, I remember seeing someone who's not a particularly well-known individual, but he got 212 shares by just offering to give away an iPad. 
Uh, and if that gets you a thousand more likes and, you know, uh, you, your iPad was, what, three or four hundred quid, that's three or four pound a like, ultimately. And you can buy the iPad through the company so you can offset the tax, um, you know, get accountant's advice on that. Uh, so, you know, that's a pretty good return on investment. Um, what other things could you give away? You could give away, um, you know, sort of free uh, consultations of the products and services that you run that have a value attached to them. All right. So generally, people will like, share, comment if incentivized to and generally won't if not. All right. Then number 10 is to engage with and possibly joint venture with influencers. So could you go to people who've got a lot of followers and fans and customers? Could you do a joint venture where they promote you and you promote them? Now, if you're of an equal size to them, that's likely to be equitable. If you're smaller than them, they may they may not want to do that. Um, but I think a good way to approach influencers, whether they're the social media influencers or they're big podcasters or they've got big databases or they're just big companies in your space, give them value first. Share some of their work. Comment on some of their posts. Um, engage with them without sort of them feeling like you just want to take advantage of, of, of them. Uh, build a bit of a relationship with them. And then at the right time, you could maybe make a small business proposal. If you've shared their work, if you've you know, helped them get a little bit more exposure, then you know, that, they're, they're probably more likely to partner with you. Uh, I've got a little tip on this, is that you're much more likely to get and people on your podcast or interviewed on your live feeds or just maybe helping you um, when their books come out. People are much more open minded and amenable to doing podcast talks, events, etc. When they're promoting a book, they'll do, a, you know, like a book tour, if you like. Uh, and I've got people and some even bigger names that I can't announce yet, but huge names agreed to be interviewed by me, which I don't think they would have done. The billionaires. Um, had they not been launching their book at the same time. So how can you help them get their new product or service out there? And in return, you know, they may help you. You know, I like to um, interview people on my podcast and that's a great uh, benefit to them with 1.23 million subscriptions across the globe. Uh, and of course, I will, that will give them great exposure. And maybe in return, they will publish the, uh, the interview of them on their Twitter or on their Facebook pages. Uh, you know, and sometimes I ask and sometimes I just leave it to them. But once you've um, partnered with or done a bit of work with a couple of big influencers, they can really, really increase your exposure, your reach, your followers, your fans, etc. I've got loads of examples of this. I think I'll keep the discussions of the examples in the Disruptive Entrepreneur community. So if you're listening in on the podcast, make sure you do join the Disruptive Entrepreneur community. It's just because, you know, they're just examples. I think you get the picture. Um, but when I launched one, my first book, a guy with 65,000 people on his database po promoted it for me. I only had about, what, 5,000 on mine. He promoted the book. We sold hundreds of books. Uh, and that really helped grow our business. When I was on Radio 2 with Steve Wright, we sold hundreds of, maybe even in the low thousands of copies of Life Leverage. And that was a huge boost. So um, the tip with influencers, though, is not to go up to them and go, hey, yeah, promote my stuff, man. And, and then when they don't reply, go, oh, you think you're a big influencer and you never reply. You're an asshole. Some people, I've seen some people try and communicate like that. And it's like, um, you know, they must get asked all the time to try and build a bit of a relationship with them. All right. So a few points then. Number one is if in doubt, test, 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 test a post, test a rant, test an anti-popular post. You know, test a trending or newsjacking post. If it works, do it again. If it doesn't, delete it. And no one will remember yesterday your post that didn't get many likes or shares because it didn't get many likes or shares. Therefore, it wasn't really seen by many people. But no one's going to see a post you do and think that's absolutely rubbish. I'm never going to follow them again. Just delete it and move on. So keep testing. I'd, I'd, I'd encourage you to get more active on social media and get rid of your, your phobias, your fears of how your content might be received or if people might, you know, debate or argue on it or might, they, might, they may not like you. Um, I think that's all part of the marketing. Uh, you're, you're actually, your trolls and critics and haters are often your better marketers than your followers and fans because new, bad news travels about four to five times as frequently and as fast as good news. So just test, 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 test. And then when you see things that work, scale it up, put it out onto more of your pages, when you post content in, um, on multiple pages in multimedia, make sure you post them at, at different times, different days, or even different weeks, so people don't get 10 pieces of your content at the same time. 
uh, at, you know, I wasn't very comfortable with my podcasting or my live feeding. I still sometimes don't get it 100%. I did a talk yesterday in front of about 200, and no, Saturday wasn't in front of 212 people. And um, my talk overall was one of my better ones. Uh, but I, I, I must have stumbled 15 or 20 times on my words. I did even on this podcast once or twice. You know, you're never perfect. You're always just getting perfect later, getting a bit better. Start with a one minute video, start with a five minute audio just to get going. You'll get better, you know, you'll get more engaging, you'll get more entertaining, you'll get more concise. Or for those of you that don't think you've got a lot of information, you'll get more ideas and you'll get bigger with your content. Hey, look, I've listened to an eight minute podcast, which was seven minutes of waffle and it was rubbish. And I've also listened to a three hour, five minute podcast, which was three hours and one minute of gold and four minutes of ads. So it's not about the amount of content you put out there and the length. It's about the quality, the depth, the, you know, the value of it, the, um, the granular nature of it, the ability for people to implement it, the relevance of your content. And hey, you, we're always just testing. So if this, I'll look at my analytics on my podcast and I'll look at the analytics on the live feed. And if there's lots of comments and shares and people like it, I'll do stuff like this again. If they don't, huh, I learned, didn't lose anything. I'll try something different next time. But I don't just want to keep doing Bitcoin. So watch out, because I've got some exciting... See, I told you, I slip on my words sometimes. <laughs> All right, have we got anything else to cover? So consistency is important, but so is a bit of surprise every now and again. If you do the same thing at the same time, in the same way, over and over and over, they'll get bored. So the reason I've done a couple of these podcasts in this new podcast booth, oh, Felicity with her Christmas jumper on, um, <laughs> is just because it's just a bit of a different backdrop to my really messy home podcast studio. Um, every now and again, a rant is a good surprise if you're not a ranty kind of person. So surprise a little bit. You want to break people's habits and patterns every now and again. But you also want them programmed to know that at 8.30 every morning, Rob's going to do a live feed. And on a Monday and a Friday every week, Rob's going to do a podcast. All right. So I think that'll do. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. If you're watching live, make sure you listen to my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur. If you're listening to The Disruptive Entrepreneur, make sure you're in the Disruptive Entrepreneur community where we keep the questions, comments, debates uh, going and you can get a lot more one-to-one -one time with me. Uh, we've got quite a lot of exciting stuff coming up. I've got about six interviews. So we had a little spell for about two months where we weren't doing any interviews because I only interview people I think are great. You know, I want to interview people who you don't see on the interview circuit. I want to interview really, really successful people. I want to interview people that you wouldn't normally think of, but surprise you with how great they are. So I'm interviewing um, two guys who set up a really amazing watch brand, but it's a British brand, not a Swiss brand. So that's going to be different. I've got three huge influencers who have all got millions of followers. One of them is a billionaire, though we're still, we've got them agreed. We've just got to sort out the dates. I've got some really interesting, unique and different interviews coming up in the next few weeks. So make sure um, if you listen to the podcast, you listen to every episode when it comes out and make sure if you're uh, not yet a podcast listener, search for The Disruptive Entrepreneur on Stitcher or iTunes. Thanks for tuning in. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything.